welcome back to the CSS podcast. This episode is all about a little feature called text wrap. I think this is a great modern improvement to typography on the web platform and can serve as a nice little progressive enhancement. With text wrap balance and text wrap pretty, you can create logical layout rules for your headings and other copy with just one line of code. I love this one so much, and here's how text wrap works. When displaying text like paragraphs or headings on a site, there's two distinct ways to wrap lines. You can force line breaks with an element like the BR element, or you can kind of get these soft line breaks where the browser automatically determines where to wrap based on the available width of the container. So this ensures that the text flows smoothly from the in, within the defined space. In your tools, they can also help adjust like maybe even some word breaking is the WBR element and the shy Unicode character is these are hints to the browser of where additional points that they can break if they need to. Um, and you'll see a link in the show notes to kind of help visualize where these line breaks are. But text wrap lets the user control or the author control how the brow browser is going to handle these line breaks using algorithms that have been optimized for tasks that we would have otherwise done by hand as a um, as a designer. Um, so th this would happen all the time. You get these designs and they're like, we want the lines to break there. And you're like, well, the whole, the whole world doesn't have a screen like your, your artboard. Yeah. So I, uh, I mean, I, I can't, I, I can only do it at that one size. And now we can kind of, um, articulate the same desire that a designer wanted there, but we can codify it, trusting the algorithms that have been tested and put into these specs to make harmonious line wraps based on the amount of available space. That is so true because in design school, you are really taught from the perspective of print. And in print, you are constantly focusing on reducing orphans and widows, these sort of one liners that are separate, um, you know, on the next line of text. Like that doesn't look good and easier to control for that in a print context and a web context for sure. But you still get these designers who have a design degree or design background in which there is print influence for that. And We've never had the ability to really control that type of typographic layout before on the platform until now. So this is a really big deal, honestly. Yeah. Brings a lot of beauty. Yeah. It's like a little small thing. Mm -hmm. But text wrap is actually a shorthand for two different properties. <gasps> The first is Says the crowd. Yeah. Woo. The first is text wrap mode, and the second is called text wrap style. All right. So we got text wrap mode that controls whether the text inside an element is wrapped at all or not. So values are wrap or no wrap. And text wrap style di dictates how text inside of an element is wrapped. So you can have the values be auto, balanced, pretty, and stable. Nice, pretty and stable. Okay, let's, cool. Yeah, let's break let's, them down. Let's break them down. Okay, so all these values broken down. We have text wrap wrap, which is the default value, and text is wrapped at appropriate characters across lines like it has been for 25 or 30 years. There's also the no wrap value uh, where text will not wrap. It will just overflow its containing block instead of breaking onto a new line. So you'll likely have overflow. It might be kind of funky. Maybe you want that. Maybe you want that. Yeah, like a, well, who cares? There's lots of cases where you want no wrap. And plus, it's just yeah. fun to write no wrap. It feels like this random word that you just get to like <laughs> phrase with no spaces. Anyway, okay, the next one is text wrap stable. And it's the same behavior as wrap, but used in content that is content editable. So when the user is editing the content, the lines that come before the other lines that are like, they remain static rather than the whole block shifting all the time. So it's kind of like you're asking for some stability while I type this thing out, uh, as opposed to being eager to wrap, be a little lazy about it. Then there's the ones we mentioned at the top of the show, which is text wrap balance. Balance is a uh, Really nice. So in text wrap balance, text is wrapped in a way that best visually balances the number of characters on each line, trying to make the block look most uniform or square like almost. Um, and this is very different than text wrap pretty, which we'll get into in a second. But with text wrap balance, it's important to note that there are some caveats here. Counting the characters and balancing text across multiple lines is computationally expensive for the browser to handle. So this value comes with some caveats. The first is that the value is only supported for blocks of text that span a certain number of lines in some browsers. So in Chrome, Chrome in-based browsers, the number is six lines or less. So you can use this property text wrap balance when you have text spanning six lines or less in Chromium and 10 lines or less for Firefox. So uh, with both Firefox and Safari, you might want to really think about that and only use this for headings like H1s, H2s that you know aren't going to be long. 
Uh, but then in Firefox, this works with unlimited lines of text. So you don't have to worry about the length of the text in Safari. Um, for now, Safari does not balance the text if it's surrounding a float or initial letter. Mm. And Safari also disables the balancer if the content contains preserved tabs or soft hyphens. So there's a couple of nuances with browsers. That's coming from the Safari 17.5 um, release notes too, um, those details. So just kind of keep that in mind for text drop balance. Definitely, this one is more useful for headings and larger blocks of text. Nice. Yeah, I was gonna. I didn't know that Firefox had ten lines. Um, I knew it, like Chrome had four at first, and now it's yep. six. Six to me seems very reasonable um, because I pretty much use balance on headers exclusively. Yeah. Um, and if a header that is a large font size is more than six lines, you're kind of in a different type of design problem that you need to right. do. And Safari is unlimited, huh? So unlimited yeah. amounts of lines with a couple of caveats on on what it's wrapping. That's really interesting. I tried it out too when I was you know typing up these notes. And it was really interesting. Like I kept making the width shorter and shorter and shorter and turning uh, text wrap balance on and off. And it kept adjusting, making some small adjustments. So that was pretty neat. Yeah, that is cool. Okay. So that's balance. And, and yeah, well, like we said, I really think balance is specialized for headlines. Like uh, eye catching, like one of the best examples. And this is where designers would always hand do it as the hero of your website. You'd have some uh, mission statement at the top. It's like, we create the best experiences. And you're like, okay, we need to make sure it says we create the best in one line and experiences on the next line. Uh, instead of what, so what we could do today though, is we could set a maximum width on that set of text, give it text wrap balance and watch it automatically balance it um, into the same sort of thing that we would have done by hand. So really, really cool feature there. So then we have this one, which is cutely named text wrapped pretty or text wrap pretty. I think I made it some past tense or text wrap pretty. <laughs> and this is used to not balance the text into a, a harmonious visual block, but this one generally minimizes the number of orphans. So it will adjust, it does micro adjustments of the way that the text wraps and the way that things are spaced out to make sure that the, they don't leave one word hanging on the last line. So the results can often be similar to wrap, but the browser applies a slightly more complex algorithm that favors this uh, orphanless type of uh, layout. And I like to put this one on body copy. You can put this one on headlines also, anywhere where it's not desirable to have a, a, a floating um, single word. Uh, you can use text wrap pretty. Very, very useful. So um, now I just wanna quickly talk about some of the browser support for these features with the values of wrap, no wrap and balance. These are all recently baseline newly available. So that means that you have full browser support now uh, recently landed across all modern browser engines. And then we have pretty, which is in Chromium and not yet in Firefox or Safari. And finally, there's stable. So this one is not in Chromium yet, but it is in Firefox 121 and the latest version of Safari, which is 17.5. So in Firefox and Safari, not yet in Chromium. Another little thing to note is that Chromium doesn't yet implement the longhand versions, which is uh, the text wrap mode and text wrap style. And I actually asked about this internally because it didn't really make sense to me that we implemented the shorthand, but not the longhands. But then uh, the engineer who worked on it told me it's because Chrome had implemented text wrap before the text wrap mode and text wrap style longhands were specced and broken out separately. But Chromium should have them soon, so no worries there. It's just sort of an implementation detail. You can use the shorthand for now to get the same functionality, and some point soon, you know, we'll have also the shorthands across all browsers. So that's good to know. Yeah, the I think the debate ended up because I mean, the long hands. <laughs> yeah, the long hands. Yeah, the the shorthand was setting long hand values that yeah. they were like most people aren't going to know. Like apparently, and this is the thing that, that most people didn't know that text wrap has always been shorthand. Mm -hmm. And um, and so by using text wrap balance, you're setting a default value to a longhand that you don't know about. This is a this kind of goes back to people advising uh, very often about using shorthands inside of CSS because you could be setting a default value, undoing a right. longhand that you put up above somewhere. Uh, so that's just kind of something to be uh, knowledgeable of. Uh, but it's also some pretty niche knowledge you might not run into. Uh, I do want to cover too, there's some side effects of balancing that can be undesirable. So while like you might think that I'm going to apply text wrap pretty to everything, and then I'm going to put text wrap pretty on all my headers. Um, I have found multiple areas where I was like, hey, I really don't like the balanced result here. So mm -hmm. consult with your designer and, and be weary to kind of put it on the whole document and maybe even for performance reasons, but like inside of a card, 
You have a card that has a size. And if you balance the headline inside of that card, it means the text won't go all the way to the edge of the card. And so all of a sudden your card looks too large for your headline, which is awkwardly um, line broken to be harmonious. But you're like, okay, so just that one headline looks harmonious, but now it's not in harmony with the card. So, and then the other kind of thing is when the browser does these line breaks for you, the extra space at the end of the header, uh, you can't get rid of. Uh, whereas the BR element does actually change the width of the element. Mm. The text wrap balance does not affect the width just where the lines were, were broken. Yeah, that's a, that's a good pointer with the width too. And yes, my mind immediately, I wanted to mention this when you're talking about text wrap pretty, went to my preference for text wrap pretty usually, especially in card layout, because it's exactly that weird funky thing where I don't like having an orphan at the end of the text string. But I also don't usually want a balanced headline in those cards. Like I have this on my own site where text wrap pretty tends to be what I want for in context headings. So even things like blog mm, post headers. Yeah. But if you have a hero header, like you were talking about before, where it's a marketing page or a standalone header, some scrolly telling type experience, text wrap balance might be what you want there because it's sort of more of a visual punch where it becomes a piece of like the media almost. Yeah. So I I feel you. I hear you. Those are some good pointers. I tend to want text wrap pretty. Um, so can't wait for that to be supported across browser. But for now, it's a great progressive enhancement. So yeah, you write the style. If the browser can't do it, it can't do it. whoop de doo yeah, yeah, if it can, that's great. So thanks for joining us today. That is all we have. It is a short and sweet episode about a short and sweet little line of code feature. Oh, I love it. <laughs> if you have any CSS questions, we want to answer them on the show. Just tweet us with that hashtag CSS podcast. You can find me online on Twitter at Una, U-N-A. And I'm at Argyle Inc, A-R-G-Y-L-E-I-N-K. And that question could help you and others. You never know. If you like this show, please give us a review on whatever podcast app you are using or share this with a friend. Those reviews help other people discover our show, learn about new CSS features, and also make sure that we have more time to deliver more shows and better content for you. Thanks, y'all. We're looking forward to your questions. See you next time. Bye.